What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Hangar 14 and we are going to be unboxing some stuff today. So we always like when the mailman drops some stuff off. It's like Christmas morning, except it's September and I don't feel like waiting until Christmas. So today we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at the E-Flight Turbo Timber Evolution. Now, before we go ahead and get into this video, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, make sure to go follow the Instagram and things like that so you can keep up to date and get a little bit behind the scenes of some stuff that's coming out. So you can find the link for this plane and everything in it, as well as the socials down in the description below. Let's go ahead and unbox this. Thing. All right, so now that we got it out of the box and everything kind of opened up here, we're gonna take a look at all of the contents inside, starting first with our good old instruction manual, which we are definitely going to be needing later. So these are a bind and fly airplane, but that doesn't mean that they're just gonna be ready to go right out of the box all the time, usually, especially with these bigger planes, like this one's 1.5 meter wingspan. Uh, there is gonna be a little bit of assembly required, but for the most part, everything is done for you. So. Going ahead and looking through here, we got our wing pieces, and this actually does come with floats as well, which is super neat, a part of the evolution part here, so you can either choose uh, landing gear or floats if you want to fly off of water, which I think is super cool. Uh, love doing float flying, especially with electric planes, it makes it a lot easier, unlike nitro, uh, so you don't have to go chasing your plane down when your motor quits out in the middle of the lake. But we got our floats here. We're gonna set these off to the side for a little bit. Go ahead and remove all of the packaging stuff here. E-Flight and just like everything from those lines do such an amazing job with packaging. Make sure that nothing moves around and like it just makes for honestly like just a nice unboxing experience. So here we got our fuselage here. Tailwheel installed, vertical stabilizer and rudder installed. Let's go ahead and get the bag off if we can. We'll snag on here. and get our first look at everything here. So I have flown a bunch of the Timber line of airplanes. There actually is a good amount of them, the Timber, the Timber X, the Night Timber, the Ultra Micro Series. Uh, so this is the Turbo Timber, like I said. Uh, we'll get into the differences in just a little bit here, but I'm super excited for this one because even though I've flown a ton of them, I've never actually owned one. So really looking forward to these. Uh, we're really looking forward to putting this together and getting the first couple of flights in. Got our propeller sitting down in the bottom here. Get that out, out of all the tape. So this is a three bladed propeller, unlike the other uh, series of timber come with usually a two bladed propeller. Um, so something in the turbo timber comes with to give it that more turbo prop-esque look to it. Get our wheels out of the box here. Nice big, Foam wheels coming with this thing for your bush pilot experience or STOL flying style. Gotta get the big old bush tires on there. And then we actually have uh, some working landing gear on here as well. So you see um, spring loaded landing gear that'll actually be working, help absorb a lot of that shock to make sure that nothing breaks and we can get some nice soft squishy landings. So with everything out of that side, we're just gonna go ahead and Flip this thing on over to the other side, let all the foam fall out. And get everything on the underside here. So I believe this is the other half to the wing and then uh, probably our horizontal stab as well, yep. It's got our other wing half here. Wing tubes or some sort of spar enforcement as well as our slats that we talked about earlier. So with all of that, we can finally move this big hunking behemoth of material out of the way. Get that out of there. And we can start taking a look at the actual contents of this plane. First impressions, I love the color scheme of this thing. So you notice that this is a little bit different than the uh, like the Timber, the Timber X. Um, both in, I think the Timber X is green. This one is back to the red again, like the original. Uh, and it's a bit 
uh, more crazy. So to see a little more of a design aspect to it than the original ones, I think it looks really good. Uh, so we got our wings over here. We got our horizontal stabilizer. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they want us to do first to assemble this thing. Overall, it doesn't, of course, look like much. Wouldn't expect it to be much. Like I said, for the most part, they try to do uh, everything as much as possible to make it just a super quick install. So landing gear first. All right, easy enough. So we'll take a look at our little baggie of stuff here. So we got the bind plug, we got the screws we need. Uh, looks like the cover for probably the top of the wing where the wing bolts go in. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. All right, so it looks like we'll need just a Phillips head for these more than likely. So this landing gear is actually pretty freaking beefy. We actually got like a, like a bunch of uh, different stuff going on here to make sure that everything articulates as it should. Like so, and then we drop the machine screws in. Snug. Not going anywhere. There you go. So now that we flip this over, should be able to get a good look at the actuation of those landing gear. They're nice and stiff. Yeah, they give a good amount of flex to them. That's exactly what you need. And that looks really good. I love the look of that. Like working landing gear, super neat. Uh, yeah, that's quite the setup on that. That's uh, pretty intense. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so that was pretty much the. Honestly, probably the hardest part, uh, just assembling that. Everything else just pretty much slaps together pretty easy. So we got one of our tubes here. We're gonna slide into our horizontal stabilizer as we are gonna slide that half into the back of the airplane here. We're gonna line that up, just slide the whole thing in. That locks into position. We have our other half. Now, this only uses one elevator servo and they've got a nice feature here where this will just kind of interlock with the other half of the elevator that's connected to the push rod so we'll slide this half in and as you can see it'll lock in nice and neat back there and then to hold all of this in that's what we'll use our two screws here to just lock everything in position so we'll drop those in give those a good tighten and then everything is nice and square and solid for the horizontal stab And then the last part for this to make sure that everything is good to go is connect our control rod to our control horn. So we got our keeper here. What we're gonna do, slide that into the bottom. We want as much throw as possible on this thing. And we are going to take this, lock this back into position. Alrighty, so we got the gear on, we got the tail on, now onto the wings. So actually they made this really simple, even though we have lights and ailerons and flaps and everything, they combine it just into one like really simple connector here, uh, which just plugs in on each side. So really kind of straightforward. The only thing that we have to do is put our carbon uh, wing tube in one half, slide the other half in like so. Join them together, and then we can go ahead and start plugging everything in and then get our wing bolts on and pretty much good to go. Last thing we'll just need to do is put our propeller and spinner on and then make sure to bind everything together, make sure it's all working, get the settings we want on there, and we can take it for a flight. Like I said, makes it really easy. Right plugs into the right here, nice and neat. As soon as you get it lined up, it's like a little six pin connector just like so, and the same for the left side, just like so. So super nice and neat, and then just make sure all your wires and stuff are to get tucked in real nicely here. And then the front of the wing is gonna lock into the holes up here. Push forward, careful not to push too hard on the foam or anything. Everything should go in pretty nice and neat. Just kind of wiggle it into position here a little bit. And then that should sit right down nice in there. So now we're gonna grab our little plate, pop that in, 
Make sure everything lines up. Just like so. So there is a front and back on there. That's good to know. The front part will be just a little bit thicker. Then we can go ahead and grab these. Put them down in there. possible here. Good. There we go. Sitting down nice and nice and flush. We'll do the same to this side. Alrighty. So as you can see, pretty big wingspan on this thing. We got our flaps here, we got ailerons, we got the whole nine yards, which I think is really neat. You got some navigation lights on there as well. I think there's a strobe light on here too. So differences between this and the normal timber. So obviously this is the turbo timber. So you get like a turbo prop feel to it. You can see the longer nose on it. You got the uh, exhaust stacks coming out the side, simulate a turbo prop power plant. And then of course, like I said, the color scheme. Now also landing gear are a little more beefier, a little more sturdier than the regular timber. As far as power plant wise and everything, I think pretty much the same 60 amp speed control. We're gonna run this on a 4S setup. Uh, so pretty similar to everything else. And then the main, or not the main difference, but a really nice difference here is gonna be this top front hatch. So real nice access to your battery compartment here. Um, real easy and quick. You got your battery straps in there. And then again, just like everything nowadays, just pops in the front. Magnet latches close. Real nice, easy access. Everything's gonna stay safe and sound. What more could you ask for? All right, so like we said, this thing does come with floats and slats as uh, optional. So you can see here, uh, these little foam inserts, you're gonna to wanna to take those out and then you can install your slats here um, if you want that. So that's gonna increase your low speed performance. Um, if you want the most out of the high speed performance, uh, you can keep these in. You don't have to use the slats. Like I said, uh, they're optional whether you want to use them or not. I think we're going to try it without the slats first. And then uh, later on, we'll throw them on and then just see how much of a difference it really makes on the slow speed and performance and everything like that. And uh, yeah, kind of make a decision there whether or not, you know, we really want to keep them or not. So kind of looking at this too, the construction of it is really nice you look at the way that these hinges are these are actually like really nice hinges on here um something that you really don't see a lot of especially in foam airplanes i would even say a lot of your arfs and stuff your higher end or bigger models you'll usually see um, a hinge design like this as you see as the flaps come down here too they actually come back and down as well to really extend that airfoil especially at slow air speeds so that's really cool to see too so this thing is going to be an absolute blast to fly i think these are capable of 3d aerobatics they have the as3x system in there they have the safe in there as well and smart technology this thing is fully loaded with just about everything that you could ever want so whether this is like you know, your first plane, honestly, you could probably fly pretty decent with it. Like I said, with the safe technology and everything like that, would I recommend it? Maybe not. I would really recommend starting with something like an apprentice. Um, but this, I honestly, a good next step airplane, perfect intermediate trainer into your sport line, uh, things like that. And like I said, it is capable of 3D aerobatics too. So i um, really excited to get this thing in the air and get it running for the first time. Alrighty, so the last thing to finish this up as I try to, squeeze around my limited amount of space here. Uh, we're gonna install our propeller, spinner, and all of that. So, pretty straightforward. So we get a three-bladed propeller. So this is a three-bladed 11 by seven propeller that comes with it versus the two-bladed propeller on the other timbers. So what we're gonna do is just slide this over the motor shaft there, keep that collar in there. And I believe this actually turns around like that. So we get the grips to grip the propeller. Pop that on there, make sure it's going the right way. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. I'm gonna grab a wrench real quick. Just give that nice and tighten. What this will actually do too, is as this tighten down, it'll also tighten down on the motor shaft. And then real easy like, pop that spinner over the top. Should lock in nice and neat. And we're gonna put our screw in the front, grab our screwdriver. Tighten that down, and we are gonna be good to hit the field. All right, so we got her all assembled. Now the next thing we need to do 
go through, bind everything up. We're gonna bind it to the Spectrum DX6 transmitter, and then we're gonna charge the batteries up. We got uh, a couple four cell batteries actually that we got right here. Uh, we're gonna charge these bad boys up, plop her in there and uh, take her out to the field and see what she can do. Um, and then maybe if we get some time to um, try to find an area with some floats, otherwise we might save that for another video. I'd like to get some floats on it, uh, but we'll see what we have available to us. But let's get everything bound up, charged up, and we'll see you at the field. So we're out here at the field getting ready to get this thing on its maiden flight. So we got a couple things with us here. We got the recommended uh, four cell 2200 milliamp battery here. Uh, this is the smart battery from uh, Horizon and Spectrum. Uh, we also have, I brought it out, a 3200 milliamp four cell uh, 50C rating battery just to try out. It did fit. We're gonna try it out and see how much of a difference it actually makes. But this is one of the recommended batteries that they do uh, offer on the website. It's a nice little drop down, makes it really easy to select your battery. So everything, you know, Spectrum's been doing and E-Flight and all those guys have been doing has made everything super, super easy. Uh, back in the day when the electrics were first really getting in the spotlight, it was really hard to make sure they had the right connectors for everything because all the batteries were different, all the ESCs were different. Uh, they've done a really good job lately, especially when they're coming out with their own batteries, uh, chargers, speed controls, things like that, motors, even I think now uh, that everything is just really plug and play, real nice and easy. So we're gonna try out the two batteries. We're gonna try the smaller one first, uh, just cause that is what's recommended. Just do some final checks here. We'll get in the air. All that's left to do is get her up in the air, see how she does. So this is still on the four cell 2200 milliamp. This is the recommended power. Uh, definitely more than enough, as you can see. I'm gonna drop some flaps here, see how that does. Oh yeah, <laughs> slows right down. The lights on there look great. Definitely more than enough power on the 2200. That's, in, that's impressive. So I believe that there is a three cell and four cell option. I went with the four cell. Um, three cell, I think, be more than enough too, but four is just, that's where it's at. That's when you want to do some cool stuff. Flies absolutely awesome. Get a little half cube in here. on the other side. We'll roll out. Another little flyby with the flaps drop. Those lights look so cool on the front. Basically just sit in one place with this thing. And then just head out. Try a couple rolls here. The opposite way. And let's see how she does inverted. Oh, perfect. knife edge pass. Oh, this thing flies like a dream. I'm gonna bring it in for a landing. We'll get the drop of the flaps here. <laughs> it just floats right up. Probably just drop it right there. <laughs> All 
All right, so we can pop the uh, 3300, I believe. I think that's what it was, yes, 3300. So we popped the other battery in. Um, we're gonna see how that does. It did really, really well on the smaller battery. Uh, so I'm excited to see how it does on a couple more uh, thousand milliamps or so, and then a 50C rating. So we're gonna go ahead and taxi her out here. We're gonna have some fun with it now. We'll actually drop the flaps on takeoff too, see how quick we can get this thing in the air. <laughs> Make sure we're in the wind here. Like nothing. So initial thoughts from the first flight, I absolutely love this thing. It's been an absolute blast to fly so far. Handles absolutely amazing, just like all the other E-Flight planes, especially the Timber series. It, it's just, they've done so well with a nice high wing sport airplane that you can just go throw around, bash around, or do whatever you want with. And yeah, it's just a great all around airplane, especially for the price. High speed pass. She gets up and goes. <laughs> Inverted flight, solid, everything's good. Super smooth, thanks to the AS3X. I have the safe turned off, but I would imagine with it turned on, just like every other uh, plane equipped with safe, you can pretty much teach anyone how to fly with it. It's an absolutely amazing piece of technology. Big old barrel roll. It's fun, man. It's just a fun plane. Do a nice four point roll here. Good. <laughs> Very capable of the hover. <laughs> Drop some flaps here, do some slow speed stuff. A little windy, but it's really not affecting it that much. Bigger planes like this tend to uh, deal better with the wind. Um, there's just more surface area. It's just they have bigger flight characteristics, which just makes it that much better. So even though it is, I'd say we got about gusts up to like 10 or 12 or so, really not affecting that much at all. You might see it bounce around a little bit, uh, but that AS3X is gonna make sure that you're sitting right where you need to be. I just can't get over those lights on the front. Just, it just adds that nice like sense of scale to it. It's a very sports scale. Nice and slow. You can literally almost just park this thing in the air if you wanted. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and bring this in for one more landing here today and we'll wrap her up. Drop some flaps. Slow this thing way down. This thing is literally just gonna set down right where it needs to be. Perfect. All right, so final thoughts on the E-Flight Turbo Timber Evolution. I absolutely love it. There's a lot of good stuff going on with this plane. It's a nice expansion to the timber lineup. Uh, I can't wait to get this thing on some floats, hopefully before winter comes and uh, lakes start to freeze over and gets too cold, but we'll try to do that. Let us know down in the comments below if you wanna see that as well. But I'm looking forward to that. I always love float flying. But Overall, everything, I love it. it. It flies great. Like I said, it's a great add-on to uh, the timber line of planes. You got a lot of nice lights and stuff here. You got the strobes on the tips, the navigation lights. You even got some on the top and the bottom. And then you even got the front lights in there too. It looks really good in the air. Just a nice presence, uh, flying characteristics. You can't beat it. Um, all the technology in it and stuff like that makes it for a good uh, intro level plane. If you want to have the smart technology in it, you got the AS3X to keep you nice and straight when even if there's a little wind and stuff like that uh like i said overall just a, a fantastic flying plane breaks down nice we fit it in the back of a jeep uh so <laughs> you can transport in pretty much anything that you'd need uh, which is great because i got a bunch of small cars so uh it's nice that i'll be able to take this in there as well the recommended 4s power plane here the 2200 4 cell um 
perfect. It's absolutely perfect for it. It looks really small compared to like what the plane is, um, but it works absolutely perfect. It's a really good recommendation. Like I said, I think they offer either a three cell or four cell option and a little drop down. Went with a four cell. I'd recommend it. It seems to be like the perfect amount of power for it. Uh, lasts a good amount of time. Uh, and yeah, it's overall just an absolute amazing plane and package uh, for the price. I think you can get into this thing, uh, plane and battery and stuff like that for around $350, $380, depending on the battery that you go with. Or if you have your own batteries, you don't even need to worry about that. Uh, just a really good uh, plane to just, like I said, go have fun with on the weekends, uh, take with you anywhere you want to go. Like <laughs> it'll take off and land pretty much anywhere. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So let us know if you guys like the style video, we'll make sure to grab some new planes as they come out and do some reviews on them or do some unboxings on them, whatever you guys want to see. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video. If you know someone who's been looking at getting one of these, cause I would highly recommend it. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.